Okay, everybody. Hi, it's the practitioner again. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, math minor, magician, parapsych researcher, uh, Fortean skeptic, and technical agnostic. I have once again uh, run a third... Um, You'll remember a video I did a little while back called Replication of Clairvoyance Results, follow-up to my last video, where I talked about, uh, and I put in the summary, uh, my odds of my second clairvoyance uh, results, and I told that I was undergoing a third study at the time, but I, the, the, the results were tentative. Well, I now have that study completed. Um, I've just finished off the last uh, of the 6,000 trials. So that, um, and uh, on that one, uh, again, the results are in the summary uh, and the link to the previous video on how to calculate the instructions and, uh, you know, on how to calculate the statistical signet, you know, the probability and everything else, but the binomial probability distribution and uh, is there. And if you want the original data, um, email me and I will forward you the, uh, the original uh, files I've actually sent. Uh, emailed them to myself to make sure that they're, um, you know, they're, they're tamper proof and I'll forward those emails directly to you. Uh, again, just further evidence, um, reducing the likelihood of experimental fraud um, in addition to, you know, which is ironically an unfalsifiable claim, but that's another kettle of fish. Speaking of which, I'm actually going to deal with that in my very next video. But uh, meantime, uh, for the uh, third clairvoyance experiment, uh, which I did, which is the second replication attempt, um, I received uh, third uh, out of 6,000 trials on a one in five probability, you know, Zener card uh, random number generated test, which was totally blind um, except for the total number of hits at the end of each run, um, you know, at the very end of each run. Um, besides that, there was a uh, uh, six out of 6,000 trials, uh, 1,330 hits were obtained. That's 1,330 hits were obtained with odds of one in uh, what was it now? 34,222 of this resulting by chance. I've left it in the summary, so just in case I foul up here, it'll be uh, there for you to check. Um, I also did a... Um, I also wanted to take a look at something else. Um, I'd come across something recently on target displacement. Um, this was just a... I was just doing another review of the parapsych literature, and uh, I was also taking a look at the same testing, and I mentioned this in the previous video that I had been starting uh, some work on this. Well, um, after I actually discovered that this test was equipped to, uh, after I discovered what target displacement was, and what this was actually equipped to uh, read for, um, what I did was I ran a series of separate experiments. Um, again, clair uh, whatever was saying in the clairvoyance results for those I discarded, whether positive or negative or what have you. Like, again, basically these were um, measured separately. And what I did was I attempted to uh, measure these specifically for um, looking at um, guessing the next card down the line. And out of that, I did 1,944 trials um, with a total of 424 hits. Again, same open 1 in 5 probability. Um, the odds of this were uh, borderline significant uh, at the P, at the, uh, P, at the uh, P equals uh, 0 0.05, uh, P value equals 0 0.05 uh, significance level. Basically, I got odds of 1 in 20 exactly. Um, so, now the thing is about this particular result. Um, now, I'm going to discuss uh, some possible interpretations of all the results here. Uh, before I forget, before I mention that though, um, uh, again, the significant, um, again, uh, Go see the link in here to the other previous video uh, for data on both the experiments and links to the other tests and stuff like that. And also search for my video uh, through my video for the um, uh, place where I also mentioned the uh, the very first study. But I have all the three. I have the data for all three studies saved, and I've also explained exactly how this worked uh, and a link to the test. So this way you can actually see what I'm doing too. Um, the test is to be set to open blind clairvoyance 25 and then afterwards I just basically culminated the data I just recorded all the data from all the runs out of the total sums compared them to chance uh, compared them to chance that you know uh, so, you know to theoretical chance levels and they deviated statistically significantly now to discuss some theory work on this and I'll be continuing this in another video uh, to discuss my uh, theory work in greater detail um, okay here's the thing um, Okay, uh, I want to explain this now. Now the thing is that I've also expressed before that there is a, pro a probability that there is a possibility that all um, that all of these um, issues are, um, you know, uh, that you know that every single one of these statistically significant results might be a chance fluke of some description. Well, um, I've already eliminated compounding error and the like uh, because uh, see my video will look into the psychic update uh, for reasons why uh, compounding error with this particular test is highly unlikely. Um, 
uh, you know, I've already explained this that, you know, again, from the skeptic thing, again, see that particular video uh, before, uh, you know, to see why that's unlikely and as well why, um, you know, uh, sensory leakage and, you know, uh, traditional physical artifacts are unlikely, uh, as well as statistical artifacts, including, including statistical compounding. That, um, you know, just see those videos in order to, uh, where I've already explained as to why that doesn't work here, um, or as to why that's unlikely. Um, now, fraud on my part. Um, I'm a magician. I've already expressed before my skepticism. Um, to say that I have statistically significant results um, would be contradictory to my position. So that's the first logical thing. The second thing, experimenter fraud is an unfalsifiable, uh, experimenter fraud is an unfalsifiable claim. And um, that would, uh, you know, it would be a little bit much. Um, <coughs> third thing, um, again, the fact that there are, st the, the fact that there are negative values in there, um, you know, I, I should have been up at odds of one or bi in billions or what have you if I was claiming, uh, you know, most professional, uh, even like most of the actual uh, parapsych experiments which have been done with multiple, uh, you know, subjects or like hundreds or thousands of subjects have all had odds that are up near billions of one or what have you. And they've always worked with uh, similar, like a few thousand trials, like the similar level of trials of mine. I'm only down at uh, the odds of around one to 34,000. So that does, that does seem a little bit more, uh, you know, it does seem like I'm not going to claim fraud for that. Um, the fact now, um, the, the other one which I talked about, besides uh, the other possibility I talked about, besides being um, us to, uh, besides being possible ESP phenomena or some other unknown artifact or some other unknown capability which is explaining this, um, is a statistical fluke. And this is the one which I've been using specifically for a lot of uh, psi phenomena, saying that uh, replication hasn't been very consistent and that it's a possibility that it's just they are just getting statistically significant results, although unlikely by chance, still by chance. Um, now. Uh, for the uh, target displacement results, because this is the first study, um, you know the possibility that I have clairvoyant results in terms of uh, you know precognition, you know in within clairvoyance trials, that is again possibly a statistical fluke. However, this is the third replication. This is the third study, the second replication, and the third time running um, of this uh, of 6,000 trials on this particular um, type that we that I've actually had a um, that I've actually had. Um, uh, significant results, and it's varied uh, different at different times. You know, it was started off at fifteen thousand, dropped to one in two thousand, then went up to this one in thirty-four thousand, uh, or something like that. My results are still labeled on the other video. Uh, point being is that if it's run three consecutive replications, this was a, uh, a cr criteria put in by the skeptics a while back. They said that uh, they wanted exactly three replicate. They said they wanted exactly three studies which would replicate uh, significant effects, like you know, significant effects for three consecutive studies in p-value. Well, I have that, so. Um, that reduces the likelihood, of, uh, you know, fellow skeptics. So that reduces the likelihood of this being a statistical fluke considerably. Um, if I meta-analyze all these, um, I'll actually put a meta-analysis in the next video. But what I would do for that is uh, basically again total number of trials, total number of hits, you know, as it treated as if it was all just one big study. And the reason I'm going to do that is because one skeptic uh, suggested to Dean Radin that he should do that at Google Tech Talks. Um, so I'm going to follow that particular line of logic and uh, actually take a look at what the levels of statistical significance overall were if I lump these all together in as one big study rather than meta analyzing them as three separate studies. Um, but again, either way, they're each statistically significant, so replication is not an issue. And if people want to look for cumulative levels of that, well, then I could just simply uh, lump them all together as one big trial, and you can take a look at it that way. The same with the statistic with the uh, telepathy trials. Even if uh, we weren't looking at skeptic believer or what have you, I could lump in the skeptics trials with the believer trials, and I'd still be statistically significant to 625, which was, you know, again, you know, the point being is that there's, you know. It's not likely um, that the issues are there. So anyway, I will discuss um, a few possibilities in terms of debunking other arguments against this um, in greater detail in a little bit. Um, my next video will go into greater detail on this, and I will also put a meta-analysis out. Um, well, it's not strictly a meta-analysis. It's basically just a lumping together of all trials, a la what one skeptic suggested to Dean Radin at Google Tech Talks. So um, uh, here's, here goes nothing, and let's take a look.